Good morning. We're at the State Emergency Operations Center. I'm here with uh, Executive Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Kevin Guthrie, Jared Perdue, our Secretary of Florida Department of Transportation, and Major General John Haas, our Adjutant General for the Florida National Guard. Uh, on Thursday, uh, I issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency and directed the Florida Division of Emergency Management to fully activate to a level one uh, and to utilize all available resources of the state emergency response team to prepare the state for what was then Invest 97L uh, and is now Tropical Storm Debbie. The latest weather updates indicate that Tropical Storm Debbie is about 190 miles southwest of Tampa. Maximum sustained winds are currently 50 mile per hour, but those are expected to increase. Tropical Storm Debbie is likely to become a Category 1 hurricane before making landfall in the Big Bend region of Florida. Uh, as you remember last year, we had Hurricane Idalia. Uh, this storm is a, a similar track. It, it may be a tick to the west of that. Uh, it very well may uh, have greater impacts here in the Tallahassee region than Hurricane Idalia did. Once it crosses landfall and enters uh, the Florida Panhandle slash Big Bend region, wherever it does, uh, it is going to move very slowly across northern Florida and southeast Georgia. Uh, and the result of that is, is less going to be a wind event at that point than a rain event. It is going to drop a lot of rain across uh, many parts of the state, but certainly uh, the northern part of the state. We already have saturation in those areas, so you are going to be at risk uh, of flooding. And we anticipate landfall to be early tomorrow morning. We're already seeing some of the effects of the outer bands in the southern part of Florida. Now, in preparation for the storm, I activated the National and State Guards to be ready for search, rescue, and humanitarian assistance. The Florida National Guard is standing by with 3,000 service members ready to assist the state emergency response team, which includes search and rescue, route clearance, commodity distribution, and protection of critical infrastructure. Uh, we've also prepared 12 swift water rescue teams, and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has prepared their full fleet of airboats and John boats for search and rescue should that be needed. There will be power outages. Uh, if this hits here, particularly even as a Category 1 hurricane, and it's a tropical storm now, it's possible that you could have serious intensification between now and landfall, um, it could get up to 85, 90, 95 mile an hour sustained wind. That is absolutely possible, uh, particularly in parts of the state like here in Tallahassee. There's going to be a lot of trees that are going to fall down. You're going to have debris. You are going to have power interruption. So just prepare for that. Uh, if you're in the path of the storm, assume that that's going to happen. Now, we have assets in place in advance of the storm, like we always do, and near the predicted areas of most severe impact. Uh, Kevin's team and, and our office have been working with the utility companies throughout Florida, uh, and they've, uh, as of now, this morning, identified up to 17,000 linemen that can assist with restoring power immediately after the storm. Kevin's also monitoring if we need to bring in more uh, throughout today, then, then, then he's going to do that. Uh, the linemen will be deployed once it's safe to begin power restoration efforts. And I just urge all local governments, uh, all utility companies to utilize these resources. Uh, once the storm pass, of course, we want to make sure people are safe. You want to do search and rescue if needed. We'll be working to clear the roads, of course. But getting that power back on is, is very important. Uh, we have the resources uh, available for you. I mean, we want to do that. You know, we have had storms in years past where people were without power for a long time. And sometimes there's so, so serious damage, it's hard, right? But sometimes it can be done earlier. You just got to have the people there. So we have the people ready, and we want to move very, very quickly. We've also pre-staged over 30,000 bottles of water, over 160,000 meals, and nearly 14,000 tarps uh, in the pa parts of Florida where we expect impact. We've also uh, are in the process. Uh, we have constructed and are going to continue to construct flood control devices at utility stations as well as schools and other locations. First time we've ever done this with utility 
So there have substations, we're gonna have a lot of water. Uh, if those substations flood, that's gonna cause power interruption. Uh, so Kevin and his team have, uh, have provided those. Uh, we think that that's gonna be, be able to mitigate some of the power outages that we're gonna be doing. That's the first time Florida has ever done the flood, um, the flood control devices at utility stations, and we have had a few local communities that have really embraced it, and, and, it, and it's been been effective. So we're happy to be doing that. Uh, we do have, um, uh, of course, shelf stable meals, uh, other types of uh, uh, of sustenance that'll be available for folks should that be needed. Now, the Department of Transportation has staged resources in secure locations in proximity to the projected path of the storm. Uh, they are committed to a very rapid response once it's safe to do so. They have 1,200 generators to support traffic signals and emergency power needs for the transportation system. Uh, 70,000 water pumps are staged and there's hundreds available to uh, help with the roadways but also help with areas that, um, that are under flood. And there, there are going to be some areas that are going to flood as a result of this storm. They have 230 pieces of heavy equipment and trucks to support cut and toss operations uh, to allow for response personnel to reach impacted areas. Uh, 120 bridge inspectors located throughout the state to respond and reopen bridges. Following the passage of the storm, 120 cut and toss crews to clear roads and interstates from debris and 150 additional crews to assist with various emergency response efforts including damage assessments, flooding, traffic signal restoration. Um, FDOT has already been clearing roadways and shoulders uh, over the last few days. Uh, and of course, FDOT has been helpful with clearing the way so that the power companies and the crews can get in and restore power. Now this is a storm that's uh, potentially dangerous. Uh, residents should be finalizing all of their preparations now. Uh, we are seeing already some, some of the impacts from the far-flung parts of the storm. Uh, we anticipate uh, tomorrow we're going to see uh, it make landfall. It is potentially going to meander across that North Florida, South Georgia border uh, at a very slow pace. And so that means there's going to be a lot of water. Uh, you already have some of the rivers and the tributaries that are already high. Um, you're going to end up with uh, possibilities of flooding, not just in the next two days, but for, for many days afterwards. Uh, so, so just be prepared for that. Make sure that you're doing what you need. If you have kids, make sure that, that they have what they need, uh, items to be able to help them feel better during the storm, especially assuming there's going to be some power outages. And make sure your pets are taken care of, too. Now, there are shelters that are open, that are being open or have been open in some counties that are in the path of the storm. Uh, our rules in Florida are that all counties have to have at least one pet-friendly shelter. It's important that we do that. Uh, people that will, uh, and there's, there's not a lot of evacuation, people under evacuation orders. I know there's some of the local zones that have, that have been either voluntary and maybe some mandatory, uh, but we, we do have those shelters or local communities have those shelters. Uh, but make sure you're taking care of your pets. Make sure they have everything they need during, during this storm. Uh, we're going to see flooding uh, in various parts of the state potentially. I mean, you know, you look at that track, and you know, right now they have it kind of going into Big Bend, you know, maybe a little bit east of Tallahassee, uh, and then going across the, the state, uh, mostly southern Georgia, north Florida. But you know, this is a big storm. I mean, you're going to have rain that's going to be far beyond the center of the storm. So just prepare for that. Just because you're not in the eye of the storm does not mean you are not going to have major, major impacts from the storm. Uh, so flood water is dangerous. Uh, hide from the wind but run from the water is what we tell people. Uh, it's not safe to drive in flooded roadways. Uh, there's hidden dangers, there's downed electrical lines. If the storm passes and, you, and your streets are flooded, uh, be careful walking in that. Uh, this is potentially hazardous uh, to be able to do. Most deaths from flooding uh, are from individuals who are driving in flooded waters. It only takes one foot of moving water to move a vehicle, so please stay off the road if a flood watch or warning is issued in your area. And based on the amount of, of water that we're expecting, you know, there are going to be floods that are going to happen in different parts of the state. Uh, if you have any items outside your home, 
uh, you need to bring them inside now. You know, we've got a lot of athletic equipment. We've got baseballs and, and, and bats and gloves and stuff in our front porch. It's all inside now. We've got nothing nothing out there. Uh, and I would, uh, I would encourage other folks to, to follow suit with that. Uh, anything you can pick up, put it up before it becomes debris that harms your home in the event of storm force winds. Uh, emergency alerts save lives, so please have multiple ways to receive those alerts and act immediately when you receive them. Uh, your local emergency management officials uh, will have uh, the best information that's relevant to your area, uh, whether that's what's going to happen with schools, whether that's what's going to happen uh, with any evacuation, either recommendations or evacuation orders. So please listen uh, to your local officials, uh, heed that guidance, and make sure you're doing what you need to do to prepare uh, and to protect yourself and your families. Uh, you can find county emergency management information at floridadisaster.org backslash counties floridadisaster.org backslash counties. Um, this is uh, not something that is unusual for Florida. Uh, we know during hurricane season that we have uh, a tropical weather. Uh, we have prepared, uh, even when this thing wasn't even organized, uh, we marshaled resources and have been working very hard. And I want to thank Kevin and his team, uh, Jared, everybody who's been, uh, they've been working round the clock uh, over the last few days to prepare for this. So just take it seriously. Uh, understand that this is going to be an event that has uh, significant impacts across the state uh, and stay safe. Uh, uh, listen to your local officials uh, and uh, as soon as the storm uh, passes, you know, we'll have folks that are in there offering assistance uh, as needed. So I'm going to turn it over now to, to Kevin Guthrie and then Jared Perdue. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Again, as always, Governor, thank you so much for your steadfast leadership and swift action on this. You know, again, it's very easy for us to do our job here at the division when the governor gives us, you know, 48 to 72 hours to get ready. We were able to fully deploy the Florida National Guard and have them in place on scene before the storm makes landfall, and that's very, very crucial to doing that. So, again, thank you, Governor, for your leadership on that. I'd like to start by sharing what I typically emphasize about tropical systems. Each tropical system brings unique circumstances and you can't respond the exact same way to each and every one of them. This is certainly true with this particular storm. Two days ago this was just going to be a rain event. Now we have a wind and a rain event, but the winds are going to subside pretty quickly once it makes landfall and then we're going to be into a catastrophic rain situation where we have situations in Florida that will receive 15, maybe as high as 20 inches of rain. That being, assured, or that being said, please rest assured that the men and women of the state emergency response team are the best of the best. They have been diligently working since last week and through the weekend to ensure that the state is ready to respond to your needs. The state emergency response team has logistical staging areas set up in Duval, Jackson, and Marion counties to ensure we can get requested resources to communities quickly and as soon as it's safe to do so. As the governor said, Tropical Storm Debbie is set to become a hurricane by tonight before it reaches the Florida Big, Big, Big Bend coast. I was talking to our meteorologist this morning, and again, there is a one in three chance that this may have a rapid intensification. So I want people to make sure they're paying attention to the updates. Those updates come from the National Weather Service at 11, 2, 5, and 8 around the clock, 24 hours a day. So please make sure you're tuning into your local meteorologist your local National Weather Service station, the National Hurricane Center, your local emergency manager, and or the state emergency response team. Please remind, uh, I'd like to remind residents to uh, not focus on one forecast cone. The hazards in this situation are going to be tornadoes, strong wind gusts, inland flooding, and possible impacts well outside of the center of the storm. We had our first impact last night at around 9 p.m and that was a tornado warning for the areas of Northern Broward and Southern Palm Beach. So please, again, we're starting to see those. Make sure you're aware of them. As we said, this uh, system could produce up to 18 inches of rain across portions of Northern Florida through Friday morning. Please remember that storm surge, tropical storm and hurricane warnings mean that these, impacted, these impacts are likely expected in the next 36 hours and we already have those storm watches and warnings up. Storm surge can cause water levels to rise very quickly and flood large areas, sometimes in just minutes. And you could be left with no time to take action. 
If you haven't already evacuated, as instructed, the time to do that is now. As the governor indicated, we do have some counties that have voluntary and mandatory evacuation orders, but you can find out those evacuation orders from your local emergency management agency. Also, as the governor said, it is never safe to be in floodwaters, as there can be many, many hidden hazards, such as the live electrical wires, displaced wild animals, chemicals, and hazardous waste. And simply put, floodwaters are unhealthy and unsafe to be in, so do not walk or drive through them. You should make, uh, be now making your final preparations. As the governor has also said, this is the first time that we have deployed flood control devices around substations. This has been a best practice for hospitals inside of Hurricane Ian and Adalia, and now we are taking that uh, to substations and wastewater treatment plants, water treatment plants. If you are a municipality or a county, an electrical entity, we still have some time to put that out. We have over 10 miles of the flood control devices Contact your local emergency management agency. Make that request of the state of Florida now. Now is the time so that we can get that into your community and help protect that infrastructure. To Floridians that are looking for resources on preparing and other state updates, please follow us at floridadisaster.org slash updates. You can also follow us on X and Instagram at F-L-S-E-R-T and on Facebook at F-D-E-M. And, Governor, as always, thank you for your continued leadership and support. Eric. I thank you, Governor, for your steadfast leadership, and thank you, Kevin, for your leadership at the Division of Emergency Management. We've been having interagency coordination since early this week. At the Florida Department of Transportation, we started coordination calls and staging and moving and mobilizing resources as early as Monday of this week. Um, we take these storms very seriously. We want to be prepared to respond at a moment's notice. Um, we've already begun securing all of our construction uh, projects throughout the state, especially in the vicinity of the impact area, all of our coastal bridge projects, and even uh, projects along state routes and interstate system to help people move around. We secure those projects and, and shut those projects down so people can move around freely. Uh, we've been preparing our facilities, uh, making sure travel lanes and shoulders are clear from debris and ready to handle evacuations if they're ordered. Uh, we've already extended our Road Ranger Service Patrol to 24-7 operation to facilitate people safely moving around and getting where they need to go. Uh, we have, so we're ready to facilitate evacuations. We've been staging crews and equipment these last few days, moving them to be prepared to go in at a moment's notice into the impact area. Uh, as you heard the governor mention, we have over 120 cut and toss crews on standby and ready to go. We have 150 other crews ready to support the emergency response efforts with damage assessment, flooding, traffic signals, et cetera. Uh, these resources are prepped and staged strategically so that we can respond quickly. We have over 1,200 generators that we've already mobilized, over 230 pieces of heavy equipment, and 70 pumps to help with flooding, especially when that localized flooding starts occurring. Uh, we have drone teams, we have Starlink devices, we have connectivity, and we're ready to go. Uh, we're also preparing um, our bridges. We're watching them very closely when it comes to bridges. There's a lot of things to remember. One is if you see water overtopping the road, do not drive through it. It is very dangerous. Do not drive through water overtopping the road. We have over 120 bridge inspectors ready to go as soon as the storm passes through. Um, we have several streams, creeks, tributaries, and rivers in the state of Florida. It's one of the things we're known for. Anytime there's a major rain event, that water can rise quickly. We're going to be watching it very closely. And, and again, if you see water overtopping the road, do not drive through it. When it comes to wind, um, we work very closely with Florida Highway Patrol and local law enforcement. As soon as the wind reaches sustained 40 miles per hour, law enforcement officers will begin to close those bridges to traffic. So please keep that in mind as you're looking at evacuation orders, as you're preparing to move around. Once the winds reach 40 miles per hour sustained, those bridges will start to be closed by law enforcement officers. We've been in very close coordination with our airports, our seaports, our transit agencies. They're all prepped and ready to implement their emergency response plans. Uh, the seaports on the West Coast, Seaport Manatee, St. Pete and Port Tampa Bay have all closed their waterside operations to shipping, but the fuel terminals on the land side are fully operational and serving those who need fuel. 
So we're staged, we're ready to go. Remember, for traffic information, florida511.com is the place to go. All of our closures, all of the impacts to roadways will be published on florida511.com. Again, Governor DeSantis, thank you for your leadership. So we're um, going to have a, a major event. Uh, we are, of course, monitoring as it's in the Gulf. The further west that track moves, uh, likely the, the more room it's going to have to intensify. So it's not out of the question that you could end up with a Category 2 storm. I mean, that is possible. Uh, it may not be the most likely, but it's certainly possible. So, so just prepare for that. And then, then once it does make landfall, it is going to be meandering for, for quite a bit over the next couple days. And, and it's going to just drop a lot of water uh, on the state. And, and that's going to have impacts. And, and there are going to be hazards as a result of that. So, so just make the preparations now. Uh, Kevin mentioned on some of the things with the local governments, with what we're doing for the flood control, uh, with the substations, you know, that could be the difference between keeping one of those substations operable versus having an outage and then having to scramble. So, so please utilize the resources that are available for you. We stand by ready to help. There's not a place, state in this country that if there's a request, Kevin's guys are fulfilling that faster than anywhere else in this country. And so, so they've been uh, preparing for this. Uh, they're ready. So, so please, if you need it, uh, ask for it, uh, and they want to deliver it. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I would ask. Obviously, this area it looks like we're going to get the brunt of it. And as you know, uh, we're already traumatized from the May 10 storms and tornadoes. Um, and here we go again. I guess what's the best thing to tell the residents of this area in terms of how prepared you all are uh, and uh, what, what they can do specifically to, uh, to make sure that they are uh, individually or, or their families are prepared? Well, the, we recognize when you're talking about uh, an area like Tallahassee, uh, there's a lot of trees. People like the trees, but uh, hurricanes, that's a lot of uh, opportunity to, to have debris flying around. Uh, that can impact roadways. Uh, it can create dangers in and of itself, but it also uh, makes it more likely that you're going to have power interruptions. And so what Kevin and the team have done, uh, they've mobilized working with the power companies, linemen, uh, they may be bringing in some from out of state even, if that's necessary. And I think what we want to avoid is, uh, I think it was Hermine, what was that, 2016, where it was like people were without power for, for weeks. Uh, we have mutual aid. We've done it. When, when the local utilities accept it, this stuff can be put back uh, online much quicker. Uh, so I would just say, whether it's Tallahassee or anywhere else, you know, accept the mutual aid. Uh, our view from the state is when these storms happen, of course you want to protect life and limb and property. Uh, if people are in need uh, of, of rescue, of course that's what the number one. But then get the, get the power back on. And that's why they've mobilized all these resources. We've been doing this on all the different storms. They did not do that in Hermine, of course. Uh, so, so that's something that's really important. But we got you got to work together. Uh, we need to have a sense of urgency on this. Uh, I know Kevin um, and his team. You know they're going to be raring to go to be able to do. You know even in some of the most se severe storms, fortunately the vast majority of people don't have their home destroyed, aren't aren't hurt. Uh, but if you have all these people that are just waiting and waiting for weeks on end for power, that 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 makes it harder to do everything else you need to do. So there's been a huge amount of emphasis on having these, these folks staged, be ready to go in. And, you know, this is a storm. This is going to be a hurricane. It may even be, may be Category 2. Uh, in Tallahassee, that's going to hit different than maybe some other parts of the state just because the amount uh, of trees that you have. And, uh, and we're going to see some trees knocked down. I mean, that is going to happen. So that's going to impact the power. So, so they're going to do that. Uh, they're standing by, and I know we're working with local government here as well as all the local governments throughout the region to make sure that we're able uh, to respond um, as quickly as possible uh, for that. And Jared's guys are helpful on that as well. I mean, they're clearing the way for these utility linemen to be able to get in there and do it. So as soon as it's safe to do so, uh, they're, they're going to be out there working on power restoration. Do they have um, in substations around here, are they using the flood control devices in Tallahassee, do you know? 
General, I don't think we have any. We have one mission. One, already one, mission complete. one mission complete here. So, you know, that could be the difference between having some power outages in a given area and maybe not or mitigating. Uh, so I'm glad that they were doing that. These are things, you know, you kind of learn like what's what. We saw some of the substations that were a little higher at Ian. They, they did fine. Some of the ones that were lower had some problems. And so Kevin and his team said this is something that we want to look into. And so now we're in a position to be able to deploy those. But certainly any of these local governments, Kevin and his team are ready. Uh, we want to deploy more. We're totally willing to do that. So, so just make that request and, and we'll respond. We still have some time today to do it, so let's get it done. And if I had one follow-up to Kevin Guthrie, uh, if you could tell us specifically what you're doing to get ready for after the storm to uh, restore power uh, and then talk a little bit more about these flood control devices. What are they, what do they do, and, and so forth. So to the first question on the power, uh, as, as the governor's already indicated, we've got uh, between 12 and 17,000 responders already identified inside of the state that are ready to go. So again, we are working very closely with the Florida Municipal Electric Association right here inside of Tallahassee, as well as Florida Co-op Electrical Association and the independent on utilities. We have talked to every single one of those in the Big Bend area, representatives of, the indiv uh, of those individual companies. They are ready to go, they are in place. As the governor has said, we are looking at additional staff coming in from out of state. Uh, that will be a lead uh, by the associations as well as the independent owned utilities to bring those contractors in. But we do have, for instance, in the, uh, in the tornadoes we had just a couple of weeks ago, uh, individuals from Dothan, Alabama came in to help out the city of Tallahassee. So we're going to be able to pull those resources from Southeast United States very quickly. Uh, when, when the governor and I talked earlier this week, I, I mentioned we got three overarching objectives, and that is to be proactive, and we have certainly been proactive, more proactive than any other state at any time. Uh, we knew that we were going to have a flood event. Flood uh, state emergency management agencies and local emergency management agencies do not typically do well in the, in the country on flooding events, but we wanted to set the standard for the United States on how to respond to a flood event. Therefore, the governor gave me the opportunity to get all of those resources in place to be proactive. So that leads into the second question of the, uh, of the uh, flood control devices. So uh, over the last two uh, hurricanes, Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Adelia, the one thing that the governor has uh, you know, challenged me with uh, for the three years that I have been in this position and then the three years that I was uh, the deputy director is we've got to be able to build capability and capacity through disasters. And uh, that is his quote, that is his leadership. We have done that. So over the last two disasters, we have been able to get seven miles of this uh, flood control system. We have another three miles on top of that. So we are over 10 linear miles. So this is a uh, tubing that we put water into. It inflates. We got uh, items anywhere from 18 inches all the way to 42 inches. And then we can stack it up to about eight feet high. So again, imagine building a, um, a flood protection barrier around the outside of a school, a hospital. We were very successful in saving some hospitals from flood damage inside of Hurricane Ian and Adalia. So now we're going that next step that we have more of this flood control device. We're putting it around substations. For example, Clay Electric inside of Clay County has been purchased this quite some time ago. And I would argue go and find a location in Clay County that has lost a substation due to flooding. It hasn't happened in years. That's because they're using this system. So that was the best practice we noticed in a, in a uh, smaller county. We were able now to duplicate that, what they're doing in Clay County for the first time underneath the governor's leadership to actually put this around not only schools and hospitals, but the substations and wastewater control facilities and water control facilities. This is going to help us respond to and recover more quickly. It will also cut down the amount of damage that happens to that public infrastructure, which again was our third objective. Uh, we Again, be proactive. We wanted no loss of life in this particular disaster. We wanted to protect critical infrastructure to prevent further cascading events. So we've been able to do that under the governor's leadership and I certainly appreciate him letting us build that capability and capacity. Yeah, and, you know, the, um, so on, on the track, uh, the National Hurricane Center, they, they'll do on their 11 a.m. advisory, they will do an updated track, updated cone, do it again at five on their five o'clock advisory. And it's possible it could shift a little bit more west and, and get right over Tallahassee. It's possible it could even get a little bit west of Tallahassee is what, what they're telling me. Um, it's also possible it could shift a little bit back east to, to get more into the Big Bend. Um, 
so so watch that but just understand none of that is necessarily foolproof i mean i remember 2020 uh her uh sally was supposed to hit louisiana uh our state wasn't even in the cone and then sally comes and Pens- downtown pensacola is underwater uh it ended up hitting in alabama much closer and so just the, there's going to be impacts beyond whatever that that cone says and so while whatever the eye of the store crosses from a wind perspective is obviously something that's that's meaningful uh when you have this much rain that's going to drop down uh however that track goes uh, you could be, you know, 100 miles away from the uh, from the eye of the storm, and in fact, you'll probably see if it's in southern Georgia, you know, you're still going to have impacts as it moves across the state in places like St. Augustine and other fo- and other places that are there. So, so just just watch the watch the weather, watch the track, uh, but understand that that's not necessarily foolproof in terms of where the impacts are limited to. How are we feeling about the blood and the platelet supply in the state? Because I know that there's been issues with one blood not being able to process and get that blood out to some hospitals, and they've been concerned about their supply lines uh, going into this storm. So, um, Secretary Weta is here. Um, I I talked to Secretary Weta this morning, and he gave me a number of about 200 uh, uh, purchased platelets that are going to be coming into the state. He feels that they're in a really good location. They are uh, able to start getting some of that uh, inventory back up to where it needs to be for the state. But again, um, I I believe probably this afternoon, Forrest, when we do uh, an update this afternoon, we'll have much more information on that. But again, Secretary Weta told me that he's uh, already purchased 200 uh, uh, packs of uh, platelets to come into the state to help out. So we'll um, you know, we'll do another uh, update uh, probably uh, sometime in the afternoon and maybe another one in the evening depending on what the situation warrants. But uh, we are going to face impacts in this state. Uh, you still have time to finalize your preparations. Uh, so I would urge all Floridians to do so. I'd urge all Floridians to be cognizant of the fact that we are going to have uh, a hurricane uh, hit the state, probably a Category 1, but it could be a little bit more powerful than that. Uh, But we are absolutely going to see a a lot of rainfall. Uh, We are going to see a a lot of saturation. Uh, We are going to see flooding events like that. That is going to happen. There's also going to be power outages Uh, that will happen. And we've mobilized a lot of resources to to get the power back on and and help the local communities do that. And we're proud to play that role to help facilitate that. Uh, But there will be some level of interruption. So just prepare for that and make sure that you're making uh, uh, whatever arrangements that you need to uh, to be able to to handle that. So we will be back with more uh, later today. But I want to thank everybody here. They've been working very hard for for the last uh, days around the clock uh, to be prepared. And this was when this was still a disorganized invest. We didn't we weren't sure whether it was going to necessarily lead to what it is now. But I think we always want to be prepared um, and and hope, hope it doesn't happen. Then, then just kind of wait. So these guys were very proactive, um, and I think we're in a good spot.